VS Code announced that they are open sourcing their Copilot chat extension and that they are making VS Code an open source AI editor. This is a really big news and it might not think, seem like a lot, but I think this is going to cause some really good things in the AI and IDs world. So VS Code announced this on Twitter. So let's go to Twitter and see. Uh, they said today we are announcing plans to make VS Code an open source AI editor. We believe in AI, we believe AI development should stay true to VS Code's core principles, open, collaborative, and community driven. Let's build the future of software development together. And they made this announcement, and uh, we have people of course appreciating the efforts. But this is not the only thing that they open sourced. The extension is not just the only thing that they open sourced. They also open source WSL, Windows subsistence uh, subsystem for Linux, and I necessarily didn't like that. You know, like I'm, I have I have been a Windows user for a very long time, ever since from childhood till 2019, 2020. Uh, and, uh, in the December of 2020, I switched to a MacBook and I never looked back. Uh, before that, I used to d uh, code mainly on my Windows machine, and WSL was a disaster at, at times. But uh, I am glad it's open source, and hopefully people would make some changes that might fix the experience of it uh, but yeah video is not about WSL I'm glad they are going all in open source this video is about VS Code itself so let's go here now they have this page and they also have this page VS Code open source AI data we believe that the future of code uh, code data should be open and powered by AI for the last decade VS Code has been one of the most successful OSS projects of course it's the most successful OSS project it's been forked here and there like if <laughs> you know that right like cursor and serve they are all based on VS Code as AI becomes core to a developer experience in VS Code we intend to stay true to our founding development principles open collaborating and community driven we will open source the code in the github copilot chat extension which if you don't know uh, it is uh, this one uh, the the thing you see on the right hand side when you use github copilot if you're using cursor this is the equivalent of using uh, cursor in regular vs code so they have their own thing uh, so they are open sourcing that under the mit license then carefully refactor the relevant components of the extension into the vs code core this is the next and logical step for us in making VS Code an open source AI editor. It's a reflection that AI powered tools are core to how we write code, a reaffirmation of belief that working yada yada. Uh, yeah, um, they have a really good explanation that why they are open sourcing it now. One of the important points is that large language models have significantly improved, mitigating the need of secret source prompting strategies like they are straight up saying that system prompts is not really that big of a deal nowadays. Uh, it's not something you should be bragging about. So they are really like not really concerned about it right now. In the coming weeks, we'll work on work to open source the code in the chat extension and refactor AI features from the extension to VS Code Core. Our core priorities remain impact. Yeah, it's the same thing. Um, beautiful user interface. I wonder about that. I think I think currently windsurfs. Uh, UI is the best right now. Okay. Uh, when it comes to chat extension, of course. Um, yeah. And then again, it's open source. You can contribute to it and stuff. Uh, I think this is really good because uh, I think uh, uh, them open sourcing the extension is good. I think this is just going to make people fork the extension a lot more and create some amazing experiences on top of VS code so that they don't need to like create a fork of VS code and do it that way. I think this is done in some form to like preventing the fork of the VS code itself. I think they are like trying to um, encourage people to fork this extension and trying to like uh, make changes to it, which I, which I think is pretty good. Like I'm not saying this is a bad thing at all because more people are going to get access to the ext extension and more people are going to start with a clean slate and not exactly clean stable but a boilerplate to work on and uh, they will uh, have an ob ability to make changes in the way they feel necessary and like share it with the community and stuff i think it's gonna be a win-win situation for the everyone one thing i don't know is like they are integrating this into the vs code core they are going all in 
on like the VS code factor. And I think this is going to impact cursor a lot more because like you cannot compete with the open source, uh, user base that VS code has, you know, cursor is not open source. They like they are fight like VS code is fighting right here against cursor. Like they're making this open source and people are going to be able to contribute to it. And there's basically nothing cursor can do about it unless they decided to, unless they decide to open source it and, uh, charge for the infra side of things. I think this is going to be a really good situation coming up in the ne next few weeks and months. We don't really know what's going to happen, but it's sure is interesting. Uh, not really sure what are the implications of it. Uh, but we do know that the way that we use AI in our code editor right now is going to change for the most part for the better because more people are going to be able to jump in, more people are going to be able to add new features, more people are about to be like get like completely fork it and do something about it without like forking the editor itself. So we are not going to have a million different editors. We are going to have a million different extensions in our VS code which we would be able to like disable and enable whenever we want to, uh, which is pretty great. And eventually it's going to be a part of VS code core. I don't know how it's going to work. Like, uh, it will defeat the idea of people creating different kinds of chat extensions, because if they are just integrating it into the core, I hope they still leave the ability for people to disable it and rely on an extension. Uh, uh, or there should be some kind of a functionality where people can uh, just try to, you know, uh, imp I, we don't want this to go back to just forking VS code. If they make this a part of the core VS code thing, people are just going to fork VS code again. You know <laughs> what I mean? Uh, I hope they leave it in the extension. Like most of the things should be in the extension itself. If they are like, if they are open sourcing the extension, I hope it's going to be that way for a very long time until they figure out what the game plan exactly is. But VS code fact, let's go here. Frequently asked question, open sourcing AI and VS code. I haven't read this article myself. So this is going to be my first one. Uh, we have announced that, okay. Does this affect my current GitHub copilot subscription? Of course this does not. Um, backend service not going to be open. So it's going to be closed source. What is the timeline? one of the things I just mentioned right now, we plan to implement these changes over the next couple of months, check our plan item details and updates to our time about the timeline. Our goal is to make the experience for contributing to our AI features as simple as contributing to any part of VS code to part as a part of this. We want to make it possible to use GitHub copilot backend services for debugging and testing purposes when contributing. Okay. I think this is cool. Uh, why integrate GitHub Cop? Oh, so I think, I think this is cool. So people can like use copilot services, build on top of VS code, build an extension, which was, will still be a part of the backend services. And this is a great win-win for VS, like for copilot as well. Like they are still making revenue and they are still enabling developers to create their own experiences. I think, I think like <laughs> the future is exciting, you know, uh, I, I think like this kind of suggests that VS code is going to win, but it's the future is still uncertain. Like cursor is clearly winning till now. Uh, the open source move can like change this in the future. Uh, but yeah, it's a, it's an interesting time to be alive right now. <laughs> Why integrate GitHub Copilot into the core VS code repository in the time since GitHub Copilot was first released, it's become clear that AI powered tools are core to how we write code and Making that a core part of VS code is your information in your belief. Uh, yeah, it's just a belief, you know. I'm an extension author. How am I affected? We maintain backward compatibility with stable APIs. You should not any expect any changes. We are continuously evolving and expanding VS code extension APIs based on feedbacks. We need additional APIs. Yeah. I already use, oh, okay. <laughs> Other AI coding extensions in VS code. So, oh, client is an extension? That's something new I got to know today. You can continue to use these ex ex extensions. We love that the community is building extensions. I, I really like that VS Code is chill with that. They don't, they are not trying to block it. Uh, I know that they were blocking cursor from using like the C++ servers and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, this is, I think 
they are just chill with uh, this like uh, i think they are just chill with people using their own editors but having different extensions to customize their experiences with that uh, yeah uh yeah i think everything else is uh, uh yeah just code free uh, okay yeah, everything is like uh this is these are the only fact we need like everything else is n not none of our concerns so yeah so yeah that's it for this video we just went through the vs code thing and we just uh, found out what it means uh for vs code to open source their chat extension and the fact made a lot of things very clear they want people to create really good ai experiences but they want it to be inside of vs code itself we really saw it first and when they did like the language servers ban using on the cursor things so like in cursor if you use language server for for example c++ it just broke one day and cursor decided to roll their own thing uh, it was a disaster but i th i think this move really reaffirms that vs code really wants the community to do stuff but they really wanted to do it inside their code editors i think it's a win win if you create really good extension on on top of vs codes it can be used in cursor as well i don't see a point of doing that but it's it's uh, really doable and i think like uh, creating really good experiences on top of copilot is only going to benefit github and also going to benefit the users so it's a win win situation for everyone i think the future is bright and it's also uncertain we don't know what happens we don't know who wins currently cursor is winning but we never know what happens in the future so yeah let's let's stay tuned with the entire thing and i'm gonna create more videos about this topic in the future when something changes so yeah that's it for this video i'll see you guys in the next one